My name is Jim Mathis. I have the privilege of serving as Master of Ceremonies for this morning's breakfast. Uh, I've, I've had the privilege of doing this many times in the past. I look forward to it every year. Uh, it, it's a, a, a strong connection for me and a way of coming back to a college that uh, for me personally has been incredibly important. Um, going back to the early 80s when I was a student here and then all that I learned here and, uh, and, and, and all that it caused uh, that was positive for me in my life, this is a chance to come back and meet some people and see some people who are at the same stage that I was so many years ago and be excited for them and know that, uh, you know, that they have the same kind of opportunities in front of them. This, uh, t we're celebrating experiential education here this morning. Um, but I think the way I'd like to frame it is that, to begin, it is a really solid relationship that involves a number of different constituents. First of all, the leadership at this college, uh, which has embraced experiential learning, uh, the staff and the faculty, who is critical to it working, they've also embraced it. The employer community, who also becomes involved to offer opportunities, and all of it's done for students who are going to school here at Bristol Community College. So they'll have a chance to go out into the community and spend some time practically applying what it is they've been learning in their classrooms here. And I think we've all had, you know, we've all had our own experiential learning uh, opportunities in our life, some when we were kids and did something we shouldn't have done, uh, but others when we were studying something and we had a chance to apply what we were studying and work with someone who knew a lot about the topic and who made everything crystal clear for us. Even beyond that, a lot of the students at BCC who go through these experiential learning programs make connections that, that, are, that profoundly impact them, either through finding a mentor who will help them for many years, if not for the rest of their life, and in some instances, they find a career. They find a job that leads to a career. So we're celebrating a lot this morning. This is a very meaningful opportunity. Uh, and we're going to have a chance to hear some really great stories about the work that's going on here at BCC. What I'd like to do now is bring up the leader of Bristol Community College. She's been here for a couple of years now. And uh, she has just has done great things and is doing great things. This college has been on a trajectory of growth for the past 15 years or so, and she has not just come in and maintained or sustained, but has continued to grow the college in many ways. I was talking with her before uh, coming up, and I mentioned to her that I see and hear more about Bristol Community College now than I ever have. I read more about it than I ever have, and the branding that goes with the college is as smart as I've seen with any organization in our region. And that stems from good leadership and good people who do that work here at the college. In two years, she hasn't only come in and become somebody who, you know, we've had a chance to get to know and seen what she's done here at the college, but she's also become a part of our community and a part of our region. And she shares the leadership that she shows here with other organizations and individuals throughout our community. So without any further ado, Please welcome the president of Bristol Community College, Dr. Laura Douglas. Thank you, Jim, for that very nice opening. I feel uh, very honored to serve as Bristol Community College's fourth president. And uh, boy, what a wonderful organization this is. And every day I have to pinch myself about all the great work that is being done, not only here at the college, but in the community to support higher education and to create a college-going culture. As I think about civic engagement, um, we, we really need to uh, elevate uh, this work even higher at the college. And we are having these conversations around our tables about what it means to participate in civic engagement, whether it's as a student or a faculty member or a community member that hosts a student at their organization or place of business. So here in Bristol County, 
We don't have the highest educational attainment when it comes to college degrees. While the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has the honor in the nation as being the most educated state in the union, at over 50% of its population having earned a bachelor's degree, here in Bristol County, we still are only at about 28%. It doesn't mean that we're not smart. It doesn't mean that we're not talented. It doesn't mean that we're not hardworking or have the ability to, to attain that college degree. We just haven't always had the opportunity. And so to create a college-going culture is really one of the things that we have to do in unison across this community. With that comes so much opportunity but also it's an economic factor, it's an economic equation. Because as of next year, 72% of all jobs in Massachusetts will require more than a high school diploma. So those certificates, those associate degrees, those bachelor's degrees, those master's degrees and PhDs are going to be more important than ever for us in this community in order not only to attract business and industry, but to be able to live at a certain quality of life, right? Our median income in Fall River is still only about 40,000. New Bedford, just about the same. And that's hard to do, to survive, right, in, Ma in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, where housing, the average cost of a home is over $360,000, right? So we need to really work hard to elevate the success of our community members through higher education. So what's the connection to civic engagement? It's a big one. It's a big one. We find that the students who participate in our civic engagement programs are more likely to do better in school and to continue on with their studies and graduate. And what population seems to be really hitting it out of the park of all of our students with civic engagement? Men, and men of color. The hardest population that we have in getting to college and graduating from college. So the work that you do is so incredibly important in changing the game in Bristol County. So we know we have to do more. We know we have to elevate our programming and civic engagement. So I hope you'll all join me in the years ahead of spreading the word about how important these programs are to our students and to our communities. So I especially want to thank the students who have participated, who have taken the plunge, who have committed time and resources to uh, getting engaged in their community. So let's give them a round of applause. I want to thank the faculty and staff at Bristol Community College because you are the ones who spur students into taking that risk and understanding why civic engagement is so important. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> That's right. And last but not least, we want to thank the employers because you're the ones who really make it happen. Uh, by allowing these students to come into your organizations, to learn from you, to learn good work behavior, to understand the importance of just showing up on time, let alone the customer service skills and the application of skills that they're learning here at the college is so incredibly important. So, at Bristol Community College, we aim to change the world learner by learner, and I want to thank all of you for doing just that. Thank you. Well, we're in for a treat this morning uh, with our featured speaker, I've had a chance to, to speak with her uh, a little at, uh, at the table before the breakfast started, and I have the pleasure of being able to introduce her. And I'm going to ask her to join me up here so you can see her while I'm going through her introduction. Um, for those of you who are students here at BCC, Femi Stoltz, who will be our speaker, was you six years ago. Uh, that's how recently she was at BCC, and it's a good indication of the kinds of opportunities that coming to this college can create. Femi Stoltz is a graduate of Bristol Community College, having earned an associate's degree 
and two certificates during her time here, graduating in 2013. Upon completion of her programs at BCC, she transferred to Bridgewater State University, where she earned her bachelor's in political science with a minor in civic education and community leadership. She then pursued graduate studies also at Bridgewater State University, where she earned her master's degree in public administration. She currently works as the Assistant Director of Career Services at Fisher College in Boston, and is a regular guest lecturer for the Department of Political Science at Bridgewater State University. Prior to serving in these roles, she worked as an academic counselor at Bridgewater State and a career advisor at Mount Wachusett Community College. She also served as a student employee here at BCC's own Center for Civic Engagement. Through working in higher education administration, Femi remains dedicated to policy studies and civic engagement. In addition to her regular participation in volunteerism and advocacy work, she currently serves on three advisory boards focused on advancing education and or social policy. One of BCC's own, please welcome Femi Stoltz. Good morning. Uh, I came to Bristol Community College for the first time in 2010. It was my very first time having the opportunity to explore a college campus, and I was 25 years old. Um, at 25, I was a mother of two, and I was also working as a waitress and part-time bartender. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do for a career path. I just knew that I wanted uh, a little more stability than I had as a waitress, and also I knew that I wanted a career helping people. Um, once you're challenged to think more broadly, you realize that that's pretty vague. Actually, there are a million jobs you can do to help people, so I realized fairly quickly that I needed to refine that goal a little bit. So my first year at Bristol, I didn't really talk to a ton of people, so my refining happened in the form of my changing my major repeatedly, and then eventually <laughs> I realized that that was probably not the most productive way for me to determine what I wanted to do with my life. So I started to socialize more with the faculty members here and with my staff members and classmates. And eventually I was introduced to all the opportunities that I could take advantage of at Bristol. So within one year of attending Bristol, I actually went from not speaking to anyone to getting involved in literally everything that I could find on campus. So I joined the GSA, I ran for student trustee, I lost. Um, I, <laughs> I uh, also participated in civic engagement. I was introduced to the Center for Civic Engagement my second year here, and I didn't realize it at that point, but my introduction to the Center for Civic Engagement uh, would ultimately change not only the rest of my time here at Bristol, but it would shape my career path and my academic goals moving forward. Uh, while as a student, I was actually volunteering at Taunton Public Schools where my ch children were attending, and I was speaking to a classmate, and you know, she was like, hey, what's going on over the weekend? And I said, uh, I'm going to participate in field day, actually. I've signed up to let six-year-olds throw wet sponges at me all afternoon. Um, so she said, well, that's interesting. Have you ever gone into the Center for Civic Engagement? Do you know that you could get an invite to a really nice breakfast and get recognition for your service in the community? And I said, I was not aware of that, but I do love breakfast. So I went over to the Center for Civic Engagement and I was introduced to Dr. Mary Zom, who was in the office at that time. Um, she introduced me to the million and one ways that I could become engaged on campus. Um, and I immediately started to participate in student leadership on campus. So what that looked like was me participating in the Mobile Food Mart, which I'm happy is still here. I was introduced to student leadership specifically, such as Project Cinderella, which was something that resonated with me, so I was really excited to participate in things like that. Uh, I also was introduced to AmeriCorps, and Eventually, I started to stock the office so much that I was offered a position, so I became the work study in the Center for Civic Engagement. Um, during that time, I was also introduced to experiential learning, which again shaped uh, my, the rest of my time at Bristol and, and beyond. I um, started to take service learning courses, and I realized that 
while I was gaining a ton of theoretical knowledge in classroom, you need to be able to apply that. You need to be able to see that in practice. So I was, you know, in the community at that point. I went into the community, I started to work, and I realized that everything that happens in theory doesn't necessarily happen that way in practice. And so it's best for you to actually get out there and get into the field and take advantage of internships, take advantage of service learning courses, take advantage of opportunities to meet people. Um, and so that was a wonderful experience for me and would eventually help me realize that I wasn't just interested in civic engagement, I actually had a passion for civic engagement. I wanted to study civic engagement. I wanted to know why people became engaged, why they chose not to engage, how I could help them engage, and also you know, how I could advocate for people who chose not to engage. So my third year at Bristol, after my degree and my two certificates, I was very politely asked to leave by Jennifer Boulay because I was considering staying at Bristol because of the relationships that I built. Um, so with that gentle nudge, I moved on to Bridgewater State um, and I found out that I could make friends elsewhere. I went, into the, I went into the political science department, which was wonderful. I minored in civic education and community leadership. And lo and behold, there was a cooperative education requirement uh, affiliated with that. So I came back to Bristol Community College to do my internship here in the Center for Civic Engagement. And I spent a semester going to classrooms with my dear friend, Amy Blanchett, talking to students about why it's important to participate, what engagement means, and the difference in, that they can have in the community just by participating in civic engagement and understanding the value that comes along with that. Um, so after I finished my bachelor's degree, I, again, I was able to successfully make those relationships. My professors strongly encouraged me to stay this time, and this time they wanted me to continue graduate studies, which is what I did. I pursued my master's degree and earned in public administration and am now in a gap year. I do intend to pursue doctoral studies beginning next year. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So as I mentioned though, my introduction to the center not only shaped my academic goals, but also my career goals. When I finished my bachelor's degree, I immediately entered higher ed. I realized as a student that I love to work with students, and so I thought that there's my light bulb moment. Here's how I want to help people. I want to reach out to, I want to reach out to students, community college students at that time, and then four-year college students and let them know the value of participating in civic engagement. I want to have that influence on students. So I started working as an academic advisor, and as an academic advisor, I had the ability to let students know, hey, there's an internship requirement. You should take this, you should take that. I got to suggest to them that they take service learning courses. Um, and over time, my, my conversation started to change from being related to academics to being more related to careers. And I kind of had the feeling that it might be best for me to move into career services, which is what I did. And I love career services because now I can facilitate that relationship building. So I work directly with employers, I work with faculty members, I work with students, and I help them make those connections. I help them understand the value of participating in civic engagement, of understanding what is happening in the political climate in your community, and also that I stress the importance to them of uh, what you actually gain from this, which is the ability to network. I always tell my students this, uh, occasionally adjunct, so if I have students in class, they're forced to listen to this. If not, <laughs> they get it very briefly in career services. But networking is a valuable skill that I always tell students that you kind of can't make up for them. The majority of jobs that people find are found through networking. So while you're in an internship, you have the ability to network with everyone in that organization, and those people can help you in ways that you couldn't imagine. So even if, I mean, I wish I could tell you that every student comes back to me and says, hey, my internship was phenomenal, but that doesn't happen. <laughs> Some of them come back and say, you know what? A cubicle is not the space for me, but there's value in that. You need to know what you don't want to do as much as you need to know what you do want to do. So every experience has value, and that's what I try to instill in the students. Um, also, this is the key note that I always give to students. When you finish school, there's something that almost every job will be looking for, and something that most 
recent college grads will not have. And that thing is experience. And because your internship provides you the opportunity to gain that experience, it is definitely something that should be taken seriously, but also taken advantage of and taken uh, to be a learning experience. And also, again, to differentiate between likes and dislikes. So before I conclude, I would just like to say that I do watch, I have all my students watch the same TED Talk every semester. Um, it's called The Three Bones of Networking, and I won't ruin it because I would like for you all to watch it if you have the time, it's less than 10 minutes. Um, the gentleman there takes some time to talk about his time as a student and you know what networking has done for him and the fact that when we network, we tend to enter into 50-50 relationships, that is, we're trying to give and we're trying to take and we want to be a resource and we want to get resources. But if you, particularly the student leaders, can find a way to be the 51%, that is to extend yourself more, to give more, then you'll find, oh, excuse me, you'll find that you have set yourself up for personal and academic success. Thank you. That was great. Thank you, Femi. Well, now we're going to get into the uh, meat and potatoes of the program uh, here today. We're going to get a, a program overview. So please welcome the acting dean of the Lash, Lash Division for Teaching and Learning, Jennifer Boulay. OK, it's not necessarily Throwback Thursday, but um, I have some blast from the past photos to share with you folks. Um, I was asked to share a little bit about my experience when I participated in the program here as well, so I'm going to briefly go over that. Um, what you see here is, you know, probably over 10 years ago um, at Bristol Community College, and the program was called Be Enriched. It was um, an after-school enrichment program that um, myself and another mom at the college had worked on creating. And that was at a nearby elementary school within walking distance, so our students would be able to walk if they had transportation issues. And within that, we were looking to create a college-going culture at the earliest possible age. So we had um, a student who created these logos on these t-shirts, which said, serve, learn, lead, Bristol Community College. And so the happy accident with regard to that was, believe it or not, most of the students that participated in leading this program were our ESL students. And if you think about it, what better way to reinforce your English um, language skills than by teaching about your language and culture? Within that, if you notice on the third photograph, there is a young girl in the center, and she was actually a high school student from Durfee High School. She would walk over once a week um, to participate in this program and volunteer at the elementary school where she attended. Um, although I participated in this program for about a year, we had probably about 90 um, elementary school stu students that we served per semester and 20 um, community college students who participated as instructors for this program. The um, young girl in the center, she continued for about four years participating in that program, volunteering throughout her time at Durfee. Now here's an even greater flashback. This was actually um, the only, this is the sole high school gradu uh, graduation photo that I have. I am not the person in the cap and gown. And the reason why I'm not in the cap and gown, I think that this photo actually um, very well depicts what my high school experience was like, um, because I was kind of out of the frame the entire time. And the reason why I'm not in a cap and gown is because I was part of the 10 or 11% of my high school population who had quit before um, graduation. So with that said, um, although that was kind of my identity, I did end up going to a summer school and got my degree um, that way, but my lived experience was that I was a high school dropout. So I think that experience is very important as you think about things because it's not just the piece of paper you receive, it's not just the class grade you receive, it's the experience that you get. And so that was you know, my lived experience. And luckily I participated in experiential education while I was a student here, which also helped me beyond that as I ended up going on um, to four-year school and so on and so forth. Those were the types of classes that inspired me and provided a sense of meaning um, while I was a student. 
So now, flash forward a few years later, um, this photograph is actually of the same young high school student who continued with that program all along. Um, she ended up graduating from Durfee, and then she ended up going to Mass Art to get an art, a fine arts degree. During that period of time, um, she could not afford to live on campus, so she would commute from Fall River and stay at a sibling's, um, her aunt's house during the week and bulking her classes together. And what she decided at the end was she didn't have an opportunity to take advantage of an internship and to get a lot of the soft skills that she would need in a career. So she decided afterwards to do um, an AmeriCorps year of service. She did two years of service. And anyone who knows about the AmeriCorps program could say that it's very similar to an internship in terms of the amount of hours that you're participating in that program and the types of skills that you're gleaning from that. So she was able to um, organize an event. This was for the MLK Day of Service. They actually started out their morning. This is um, students from UMass Dartmouth. They started out their morning here at the MLK breakfast at Bristol Community College. Then they went on to serve for the day with um, it was community college, it was actually high, uh, high school students and college students who then had conversations with elementary school students about issues of social justice, okay? So it was kind of funny to see that all go for full circle. And I can say that the experiences she gained from that probably helped her um, in order to get a lot of those additional soft skills that she didn't have. And I can say this because that's actually my daughter, and that is the young girl who um, shortly after graduation I ended up having. So as you can see, um, I think the benefit of experiential education at a community college is our students live and work in the local communities. So the impact that they have in the local communities is so powerful because they're not just imparting skills you know, and looking through, through things through a deficit lens. They're looking through an asset-based lens and they can envision what their future um, community might look like. And what's beautiful about this is as you can see in these photographs, it's very powerful when you can identify someone who you see as like yourself, who can inspire you, who can see the future self that you perhaps don't see. I know that that was definitely my lived experience and the same for many other people in this room. So in terms of experiential education, it could be defined as a teaching philosophy um, which purposefully engages learners in direct experience, focused reflection, increased knowledge to develop skills, clarify their values, and to develop the uh, capacity to contribute to their local communities. Or in essence, it's how we achieve our, mission, our vision statement at this college. So you may or may not be aware that the um, NACE, which is the National Association of Colleges and Employers, they put out a survey every year to employers to find out what some of the skills are that they're looking for recent college graduates. And this is the top 10 skills that they identified for this particular year. And as you can see, if you look through these skills, this is something that I often ask students, where are you getting these skills? Which class are you getting these skills in? And oftentimes they say, oh, well, I'm not quite sure. Is there one particular class? Well, probably not, I'm not quite sure. And what you'll probably find in terms of leadership and a lot of these other experiences, it's actually through experiential education that many of our students get those experiences, whether it's through service learning, whether it's through their internship, that's where they're getting a lot of these skills. So what I will challenge each of you who are students, do you have these skills? And think about if you do not right now, where will you get these skills? And for the faculty and the community partners in this room, think about how you can help these students along the way to end up getting some of these skills. So with that said, now I'm gonna to transition to the great work that our programs have done this past year. As you can see, our cooperative education program, um, we have had 121 students that have participated this past year, and that's from um, summer, fall, and spring. Our students must maintain a grade point average of 2.5 or greater, completing at least 27 credits, and participate in one hour per week in a professional development seminar. They're available for 10 to 15 hours a week in a field placement for a minimum of 150 hours. And as you can see, we're still culling the data right now. We're close to over 17,000 hours that they provided in the community. And that's with 39 different majors. Another thing that I'd like to highlight is within our civic engagement program, we ended up getting involved in something um, that, that was called Bayhawks Vote. And it was a whole um, voting initiative that we participated in to increase uh, voter turnout amongst our college students. Um, as you can imagine, 
the voting turnout for a midterm election is abysmally low. I'm going to ask you all to guess, in the 2014 midterm election, what percent do you think nationally um, college students went out and voted? You can throw out numbers. How many? 28. 28. Anyone else? 11%. 11 percent. 18. What? I feel like this is an auction. It's awesome. <laughs> Sold. Actually, who said 18 percent? Oh, good job, Lisa. You're very close. The national um, amount was 18.8 percent .8 for that particular year. At Bristol, it was 16.7. So as you can imagine, this is very important for folks to participate in their local communities and the elections. So between um, September and November, there were eight different initiatives um, that spanned all the campuses and brought information to students inside and outside of the classroom. That included voter registration, early voting applications, and 45 classroom presentations reaching almost 1,000 students. We also had social media efforts that reached over 2,000 people. So in total, the two programs, and again, we're still culling data, that's why we have the asterisk. In total, over 20,000 combined hours were given back into the local community with at least 643 students from both programs. And if we were to calculate a value added, if we went by the NACE internship rate, for this past year, for a, um, an associate degree seeking student, it would be approximately $341,000 that was added to the local community based on the 20,000 hours in the national average for internships. So with that said, I would really love to thank everyone who has participated in this program. And we've had a lot of transition this past year within this program. And this shows you all of the different folks who participated in experiential education, either through the cooperative education program, um, in terms of the, the staffing that we had, and then also um, the folks in civic engagement as well. And then I'd also like to take a moment to thank everyone that helped out with creating this great space for a breakfast today. So we have some folks from the CTL who participated in helping out behind the scenes. We also have our keynote speaker and our MC, who is a fabulous MC every year. And the Bristol Foundation for providing the opportunity for us to have this um, event. And most importantly, thinking about when we're talking about um, experiential education, our culinary arts students who put on such a great spread today. So now we're going to hear a bit more from our current students. Our class worked the civic engagement program and we did the service learning project on voting. I chose to do my service learning project with um, Providence Family Co-op as a volunteer CASA, which is a court-appointed special advocate. My internship is at the Hale News. Um, the reason why I took it is because I have an interest in journalism. We chose a primary prevention in um, educating the public about proper, how to maintain proper nutrition, just because it's so essential. At uh, South Coast Chamber, we um, prepare uh, different events um, by preparing different uh, press release forms, uh, creating uh, Facebook uh, business events, and everything that goes behind the event. I did a table in, in the New Bedford campus um, with another classmate, and we informed the students on how important it is to vote and about the ballot questions and what the ballot questions stood for. CASA is an organization where they ask for volunteers to come in and work with children that have been placed in state custody. You spend time with the children so that they get used to you and they know you and they trust you. And trust is a big thing. These children have been removed from their home. They're, you know, sometimes put in a stranger's home. They're confused. They don't know what's going on. They don't know. They think that they did something wrong and they didn't. So it's building trust with the child to let them know that you're there just to make sure that they're okay, that they have everything that they need. The opportunity came and I thought it was a good opportunity because it gives you an idea of what you're going to be doing and at the same time it builds up your resume. Uh, degrees is not enough anymore. You have to know how uh, to work in the field and an internship would definitely help you not only 
learn how to work in the field, but if you actually want to do it. I think anyone that's going into criminal justice or social services, definitely being a volunteer, working with children, especially with CASA, will give them an idea as to what they're going to face in their career. Professional experience is story different than any academic experience. Textbook information and test information is one thing, but then when you're at the scene, you realize you can't really use certain words that you learn in a textbook because people aren't going to understand it. Getting that experience, you know what to do when you're in that position. So you can tell me all you want, how to interview somebody. I'm not really going to know how to do it until I sit down with that person and gain that experience. Same thing with writing. You can tell me how to structure it, but I'm not going to get better at it until I done it multiple times. I had never experienced a courtroom, never had to deal with any kind of like domestic violence or abuse or dependency. So it really opened my eyes as to what some of these children go through. And you really gain like very um, valuable skills through this too. You learn how to communicate, you learn how to cooperate with a team, you gain like leadership skills. I feel it helps me come out of my shell and communicate more with people from the community. I think it opened a lot of our eyes as well to like community, uh, other community projects that we weren't familiar with. We ended up finding out, you know, different things that we didn't know that can end up helping out our patients just as far as resources that we'll be able to offer them. I loved this experience and I would do it all over again with the same group. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
So next up is our community partner. So we have fantastic community partners um, on campus and off campus. Uh, we provide students an opportunity to do their service out in the community um, so that they are engaging externally um, and also on campus to be able to meet needs uh, for students who may have time or transportation constraints. And as a community college, our students that are here live here in this community. So what happens on campus and what happens out in the community are really interconnected. So service learning could not happen without the help and commitment of our community partners. Um, and each year, a community partner is recognized for their continuous pursuit to better our communities through their own work while simultaneously investing in our students' education and exploration <clears throat> in their own community. This year's award recipient has been a partner for a number of years and has taken on dozens of service learning students during that time. Um, and the students have described this experience in a number of ways over the course of multiple semesters. So they've described the experience as transformational, as invaluable. One student wrote, I felt the work was really important if we do not, because if we do not remember history, if we do not stay aware of the world, we are likely to repeat mistakes of the past. So their work exists both on campus, but also far beyond our walls and deep into the larger community, um, working to engage anyone and everyone through incredible projects, activism, and educational conferences. So please join me in recognizing the Holocaust and Genocide Center as this year's Community Partner Award recipient. So last and certainly not least, um, service learning is a teaching and learning methodology. And that cannot happen without our faculty. Um, faculty who fully integrate service learning into their courses express a value in community-based hands-on learning that allows students to contextualize classroom learning while actively working to better their communities. <clears throat> Our faculty award is given to a faculty member who has displayed unwavering commitment to student learning through active community engagement. This year's recipient has incorporated service learning into their classroom for a number of years and has worked to intentionally engage his education students with projects in our local elementary schools, right here on campus in the Multicultural Student Center, but this semester did an amazing project um, where through a series of theater workshops, students engaged in active reflection to picture power relations in classrooms and how they can be produced into a play, which would be open to the public and available for all to see. Um, through the workshop, students explored and acted out hurtful and oppressive moments that involved discriminatory remarks, microaggressions, jokes, gestures, that all impact students. Um, these workshops will set the stage for a, uh, nar and the narrative foundation for a theatrical production, again, that will be open to the community. Um, it is my distinct pleasure to recognize Engen Atase with this year's Service Learning Faculty Award. So now I would like to uh, welcome my esteemed colleague to the stage, Jennifer Aralis, who will present the awards for cooperative education and internships. Good morning. Cooperative education helps all learners make connections between theory and practice, gain knowledge, and develop new skills to ensure productive and rewarding careers. The Outstanding Student Award is given to a student recognized by cooperative education faculty and staff for successful participation in an internship placement in addition to going above and beyond in the seminar course. This year, 
we recognize Ginger Wright, who completed her internship at the Naval Undersea Warfare Center in Newport, Rhode Island. Upon graduation, Ginger will be converted to a full-time employee. Her faculty members nominated her not only for her participation in a large-scale audit, but also for value added to classroom discussions. Please join me in recognizing Ginger Wright as Cooperative Education's Outstanding Student Award recipient. Cooperative education is based on the theory that learning can be made more relevant and integrated if students can apply what they learn from their academic coursework to practice in a professional, supervised work setting. The Outstanding Community Partner Award is given to a community partner for his or her outstanding contribution to the training and career development of cooperative education students. This year, we recognize Sergeant Scott Rose of the Freetown Police Department. Sergeant Rose has assisted numerous interns over the years, and this semester was nominated by student intern Tyrell Harrison. Sergeant Rose was nominated for creating opportunities for learning, showing support and interest in Tyrell's growth, and for providing helpful feedback. Due to Sergeant Rose's guidance, Tyrell passed the police exam on his first attempt and is currently working to obtain employment with the Freetown Police Department. Please join me in recognizing Sergeant Scott Rose as Cooperative Education's Outstanding Community Partner Award recipient. The Legacy Award is extended to individuals to congratulate and recognize years of service to Bristol Community College's Cooperative Education and Internship Program. This year, we recognize Nicole Heaney for her dedication to the program and for the guidance and empowerment she has provided to countless students along the path to higher education. Nicole was hired by Bristol Community College in 1999 to work with Connecting Activities, a partnership among high schools in the greater New Bedford area. She continued with the program, later becoming director and full-time faculty within the Cooperative Education Program. Nicole has worked with thousands of students and employers over the years. She's committed to student success and economic development of the region, as she believes that education is the pathway out of poverty. Before joining Bristol, Nicole worked with the Department of Public Health, Suffolk County District Attorney's Office, New England Medical Center, and Boston Public Schools as a social worker, public policy analyst, and grassroots organizer. So what's next for Nicole? After 20 years of work within the Cooperative Education and Internship Program, she has returned to her roots in social work assuming the position of Associate Professor and Program Coordinator of Human Services here at Bristol. In this role, she hopes to create meaningful and lasting partnerships with South Coast agencies and develop a pipeline of caring and educated human service professionals to serve the local community and address the issues that affect the South Coast. Please join me in recognizing Nicole Heaney as this year's Leg Legacy Award recipient.
I have to say it's been a real treat to uh, have been able to work with Nicole for so many years, connecting activities and right straight through to, to <clears throat> all the work here on the cooperative education program. Um, a couple things I'd like to, a couple of folks, I'd, groups I'd like to ask to stand. If We have a number of people here this morning who are members of advisory boards and committees here at the college. If uh, you're a member of an advisory board or a committee here at the college, would you do me a favor and please stand and be recognized? And another group, you've, you, you've met a couple, but um, I know there are more here. If you are an employer who has worked with BCC and, and uh, offering an opportunity to a BCC student uh, through cooperative education or any of the other programs, would you please stand and be recognized? One of the things about this breakfast every year, it's wonderful to hear the stories because it, it reinforces the fact that Bristol Community College, its middle name is community, it serves us, it serves our needs. Probably more than any educational institution in our entire region, it takes care of our folks who are looking to improve themselves. And more people who do that, the more people who do that, the stronger we are as a community. And as our president told us earlier, Education is going to be key for us to be able to develop the kind of opportunities we want for ourselves, for our kids, our grandkids, and, and, and all of those who live here in our region. This is evidence this morning that Bristol Community College works exactly the way it was intended to work. Uh, I'm glad you're all able to be here. I congratulate all of those of you who were recognized this morning. I thank all of you who remain involved with the college and urge you to continue to, to stay involved and, and do as much as you can. And with that, uh, that closes our program and please drive safely as you head back to work or wherever you're going. Thank you. Oh, I'm also, I need to ask uh, if you would please uh, complete an evaluation for this morning's event that's been sent via email. So if we have your email address, you'll, you'll receive something that uh, we hope you'll fill out and you'll return back to us so that uh, we can evaluate the program and it's an opportunity to perhaps strengthen it in future years. Thank you, have a good day.